So chill the theater first. Um, we haven't done a Q and A with the Walking Dead person, and uh, this person is a phenomenal actor, long career, still going. Scott Wilson is here, so let's give Scott a big round of applause. You can do a little better than that, come on. Thank you. How are you? Good. What's good? Yeah. All right. You have two legs. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> sounds better. <laughs> this one must be for the other head that I keep at home in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to talk about a couple of things and not always the obvious. Um, but I guess was there a moment today uh, and yesterday when somebody did not ask you about The Walking Dead? <laughs> think that's happened in a long time <laughs> which is a good thing so, you have, thank you you have some amazing credits uh, in the heat of the night cold blood uh, the right stuff yeah amazing movie one of my favorite films and, and on and on What's up? Let's not talk about Walking Dead right now. Just a second. So, what's a personal favorite role of yours? Uh, you mean in anything? In anything. Well, it getting my favorite. first role was incredible. You know, after doing plays which I loved and, and workshops for for uh, five and a half years, got my first film interview in, in the heat of the night. And then I'm working with Sidney Poitier and Rod Steiger, are you kidding? Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty, pretty classy company to be starting out with. So it's called I'm chewing this chewing gum, and I was just thinking of Steiger chewing the gum in that film. <laughs> but it was, that was, you know, a good start. That was a good start. So, so that was like a memory that stayed with you. All this time, like, it's such a potent, strong, vivid... Yeah. Well, I don't think about it every day. No, no, but when I ask, you know, when I, ask, you know you, I go back to that. And, and then that meeting to in Cold War. Got it. Which was, uh, pretty good film, too. So it was, it was uh, a good opening. Yeah. Now, what's up ahead of a few years? Um, the ninth configuration, which is... Um, a very interesting movie. It touches a lot of different areas. Uh, amazing performances. Uh, do you have any stories about that film? <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> I mean, we, we were in uh, Budapest for 17 weeks, and that was during the Iron Curtain days. And, and it was. Uh, Quite interesting. A lot of great actors who were also great characters. And, uh, William Peter Blatty, who's a great talent, but also a great character. It was a lot of fun working on it. Uh, it was, and again, it's behind the Iron Curtain, which added to all kinds of. It, it would take a long time to write it, but but. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of memories. I, I left my home state of Georgia when I was 19. I hitchhiked to California and I got drunk and ended up in an acting class. <laughs> so, I wanted to see some of the world and I have. Now I'm here in New Jersey. This is a major part of the world. Right? New Jersey is almost like the capital of the world to some people. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. I love the people here. They're terrific. But I, the, the, you know, my first film out of the country was uh, was in Yugoslavia. What was Yugoslavia at the time? And then I worked in in Italy and Spain and, and uh, Japan and Israel, Germany, Poland, South Korea, 
Georgia. Georgia that's another country off its own. Couldn't get away from it, but <laughs> but it uh, it's been a fun life. And had two audiences with Pope John Paul II. Remember? Yes, you, you, you told me about that personally. Yeah. Would you like to share with, with them? Like, maybe not everyone knows about that. How did that come about? Well, I did a film in Poland in 1984 that uh, during martial law, if, if you know what, um, if you remember that, those of you who were old enough to remember it. Uh, and it was a Polish film with Polish director, Polish cast. And, the, I mentioned that because nine years we talked about doing it. We finally got the film made. Then we won the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival with it. That was pretty cool. And the same director later asked me to play the protagonist in a, a film that was based on a play that Carol Wojtyla, who later became Pope John Ball II, wrote. And he, this guy who lived from 1845 to 1917, he was uh, an artist, a successful artist, and he came in contact with the homeless and it changed his life. He dedicated the balance of his life to uh, helping the homeless. And then Mother Teresa's sister studied with the Albertine sisters in order that he found it uh, before they went to India to help the poor there. So as a result of that, we had a screening for the Pope in, uh, at Castel Gandolfo, uh, the summer residence outside Rome. Um, that was the second one. The first one was in uh, Krakow in Poland. So it was, uh, and I asked him to sign my script, which was a breach of protocol, but <laughs> I asked the director, I said, do you think it'd be all right if I asked him to sign my script? He says, oh, oh, oh. He says, what does oh mean? He said, well, it'd be a breach of protocol. He said, but he might, he's a rebel. <laughs> so I screwed up my courage and asked my wife to give him the script. <laughs> that's, a, that's an amazing story. Uh, and he signed it. Uh, yeah. Now, the right stuff, a couple of years later, um, what do, you, do you have a particular remembrance about that film? Well, I loved it. I know it was coming off of a stretch of four years that I hadn't worked, which is pretty nerve-wracking. If you knew it was, you weren't going to work for four years, you might think of doing something else, but, but uh, I didn't know at the time, and I think I couldn't have been more fortunate to come out after a four-year dry spell to, uh, to get to, to be in that film because I think it's a great movie. You know? I think it's wonderful. Real American heroes. Mm. You know, the test pilots, the astronauts. Real, real, uh, real nice film to say I was in. Do you have any particular recollection of any anything that happened during the making of that movie? Oh, there's several, really. Uh, I remember when I met, met Chuck Yeager, who was the uh, first pilot to break the sound beer. And I walked up to him and said, excuse me, General Yeager, uh, I'm Scott Wilson, I'm playing one of the test pilots. He said, who are you playing? I said, it's got Crossfield, he goes. <laughs> and walked away. I, <laughs> that kind of told me all I needed to know about the competition between the test pilot. Right. You know, but later his son came up and talked to us and uh, talked to me and he got us together and we became friends. So it was, he's a great guy. He's, he was wonderful, but I understand. I understood where he was coming from, and I didn't need to ask too many more questions after that. You have real oil and this. That's cool. Yeah. I'm great. I love it. Thank you. Yeah.
always asked about you, and I filled this room. Um, I have stuff I want to talk about, but I know that it's been open. I have questions. So, does anybody have a question? All the way. What was your experience like working on the Gypsy Moths? Oh, that was great. That was the second film I did with Burt Lancaster. The first one was uh, Castle Key. And he gave me, I was in Yugoslavia with him for about six months. I don't know. Uh, I got a call from him one morning and he says, he says, kid, I got a great role for you. I said, who is this? <laughs> he said, it's Bert. I said, Bert who? He says, Bert Lancaster. I said, Bert, call me back in 30 minutes. Let me take a shower and get a cup of coffee. <laughs> I think I'd reverted back at that time to having a drink before, you know. But he called me back and told me about the role. And then John Frankenheimer called me, and, and uh, I was on a plane that afternoon flying to Kansas. So he was, uh, I, th I thought the world of Bert. He was a great guy. I miss him. Yes. Uh, question uh, is, how would you say you got in the involved with the character of becoming Herschel? And also, do you think that you relate very well to his personality? And knowing the fact that he was going to die in the series, would you have still taken the role? That's three questions. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the way I got involved was was uh, Frank Darabont when he was going to film school, was uh, a big fan of the Ninth Configuration that we've talked about earlier. Uh, I think he told me he went to see it 12 times, and each time he took a different group of people with him. So he liked that film, and actually, the, before I arrived on the set of The Walking Dead, he gave the rest of the cast members copies of uh, In Cold Blood, and the ninth configuration, so they would know, you know, who who, who was joining. Them. Because a lot of them were younger, and probably, you know, maybe they knew me, maybe not, but they wanted to make sure. So that's how I got on the film. Now, what was your? Would you say that you relate to the character as like? <coughs> do you put some of your relations of how you act and and? how your personality is into the role of the character? Well, I think every, I think you, it's inevitable you're going to put some of yourself, a lot of yourself, most Doesn't mean it's the same thing that you live with every day, but everyone has things that they, that, that, uh, where you make discoveries about yourself in relationship to the characters you're playing. I've played good guys and I've played bad guys. <coughs> Herschel was a good guy. And it's fun to play a good guy that, that uh, has a little edge to him. Because mm -hmm. no. I think that's one thing that made him interesting is that he was human. He did, you know, go to the bar and get drunk. <laughs> and it was suggested that he had uh, an adventuresome life before, you know, coming down raises two quarters, but, but uh, there's a lot of, you know, that answer anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I just want to know, like, um, would you have still taken the role knowing that you were going to die, you know? I think everyone on the show knows they're going to die straight. <laughs> 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 I'm glad they're coming for you. No one, no one gets out of this life alive. <laughs> it's only a matter of time, I guess, before they all go. And the show ain't in life. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Seeing that Herschel had so many limitations, um, how far do you think he could throw a wiffle ball? How far do I think what? How far could he throw a wiffle ball? 
He could probably hit it further with his crutch. And he could <laughs> Anyone on this side? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, would you did something different if, if say, you had the choice of how the, the governor's demise would have been? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm always thinking. You don't want to die. You know you're going to, but that no, doesn't no, no, mean no, you no, want the governor, to. The governor. Yeah, I know, but he, he was taking me out. Maybe I should have jumped up and taken him out. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, uh, but David Morrissey did a great job. He was, he's a good guy. Play golf, he beats me. That's the worst part. <laughs> I, I think that was like one of the most shocking scenes. In, uh, yeah. Yeah. And like a, a contemporary television serious that you're watching and also you become invested in becoming in the characters become invested in your character and it's like a big oh shit moment <laughs> but you, you know what was fun with, i think about the scene for me was the way it was set up before you have this big tank down the bottom of the hill with the governor you have these cars with heavy duty weaponry they're shouting, the governor's shouting up to the prison, come on down. And Rick starts walking down the hill with a six shooter on his hill. <laughs> with a tank and these heavy duty weapons. I'm saying, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> it's like high noon with a six shooter against a tank. I, I, I love the stage. Yeah, it was almost surreal. Yeah, it was very surreal. I'm not even sure when that moment happened. I mean, you actually watched that because that was the last thing you saw before I went into like uh, I think it was the Talking Dead episode. Yeah. Yeah. But that that was that was fun. But film is is a collaborative medium. I mean, everyone comes together to make a moment happen, and that's an example of it. The, the stage was set, the table was set, and with the weapons that kind of coming down, the tension is kind of percolating in the building. And then at a certain point, uh, the director, Mr. Dickinson, came up and says, Scott, it's time for that smile. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boss. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, so I smiled, that was my contribution. It was a cool day. All the crew and the, uh, even up in the front office, everyone came down to the set. They were all wearing Herschel suspenders. Oh. <laughs> uh, walk on the set, they're applauding. They, you know, it's kind of uh, got you a little choked up. It's cool. Uh, after that, Herschel made an appearance. Flashback. So. Which I was surprised to see. Anyone? Next question. Yes? How did you feel when you found out your, your character was so loved? Well, it made you feel good. I, I, in contrast, you want to hear a contrast. I was in Dubrovnik, Yugoslavia, when In Cold Blood was released in this country. And I hadn't seen anyone that had seen the film audience members. And I was in a hotel at the desk with an actor by the name of Michael Conrad. And these two girls came up to us and one of them said to him, you look familiar. And I said, he's a movie star. You recognize him from the movie. And one of them said to me, you look familiar. And he said, you recognize him from his movie. Yeah, what movie? In Cold Budget. <laughs> and they started screaming and getting away from me as backing up as fast as they could. So I think I'd prefer people liking me than, you know, than, than backing up screaming. But, uh, it, was, uh, it was good because, you know, the, the film, a film or a play is different in that you recognize the full arc of, of the, your character in play one evening or 
in a film or a gas shot on TV, you recognize the full art while you're doing it. In this, there's three seasons where you're, there's kind of an organic development that takes place. And so you're not really sure where it's going to go, how it's going to get there, but you will plant a seed here and hope that it bears fruit over there and that maybe it'll, it'll add up to something. So you have ideas about who you want the character to be, how you want to, to uh, how, you, how you want the character to play out, and the writers, the editors, correct? It's all the collaborative. So it's fun. I, I know I had a tear. I felt really bad when he died. <laughs> <laughs> really bad. I was like, wow. This you should have heard my banker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were there when Frank Darabont was there, and then the next producer, and then there was another producer after that. Were you there for all three? For all three of the showrunners. Yeah. Wow. Did, they, did you feel like they were taking your character in different directions? Or? Well, they were, you know, Frank was there when I first got it. And actually, uh, I was at home for my mother's 97th birthday. And it's pretty cool, she'll be 101 in May. I was there for her birthday and I was remarking to an old friend of mine that as long as I've been acting, as much production has taken place in Georgia, I've never worked with it. Thirty minutes later, the phone rang. <laughs> I represented and said, uh, there's interest in you for two or three episodes. New TV series. What's it about? Zombies. <laughs> Okay, tell me some good news. Not that I didn't have anything against zombie movies. But he said, Frank Darabont, Gil Ann Hurd. I said, I'm interested. Because they make great movies. They're creative people. They're involved in something that has a good chance of being something special. So I looked at the first season with my mother. And she said, Scott, you have to do this. I didn't know she liked something. <laughs> and then she read uh, the script. She said, can I read the script? I said, who's going to stop it? <laughs> she can still kick my ass. <laughs> but uh, she read them, and again, she said, Scott, you really have to. Not the best script. If I hadn't. Hey, Christ, no. <laughs> so it was, it was, uh, I don't know what we were talking about. No, I was asking about being there for all three different producers. Yeah. And if they tore you in well, different directions. Right? I'll be going to uh, Toronto next week to work with the second one, the oh. Glenn Bazaar. Mm -hmm. and it's doing a new series, showrunner on uh, Damien. It's uh, based on the old film, Omen. Oh, okay. So, that would be fun to bring. Is that, uh, that be a, just a one shot or a recurring? Well, it's one <laughs> shot, but I read the script. <coughs> Looks to me like it. <coughs> yes. I'm just wondering what your take is on the current situation with Bruce Jenner. I haven't really paid that close to I read yesterday's newspaper telling me an article about this. I didn't really read it. So you won't get on the YouTube. Scott Wilson says. <laughs> I see a long hand back there. Yes. Scott, did you follow uh, the books at all? Because Kirkman kind of had his way in the comic books, and he went one way. He comes into the TV show, and he's kind of having his cake and eating it too. You know, and he says, well, well I can go back and revisit this. Is there 
if you've read into the comics at all, have you ever say, oh man, I wish he had stayed true to the book, or wish he hadn't stayed true to the book? That's the reason I didn't read the book. Oh, really? Because I know me, and I know that if there was something in there that I, I uh, felt strongly about that I would stand up for. And I felt that it was working just fine the way it was, with the writers coming to the material, the making the, the choices that I made as an actor based on that rather than on, you know, like the source material. Um, I, I will read it. I will catch up. Not yet, especially where you know where the governor you know meets his meets his end. That that's a major turning point there. It's you know it, it really it really zagged where the book zigged. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that about a lot. Of, yeah. Uh, go ahead and change shift gears a little bit here. I'm going to ask you about CSI. And I thought you did a good job on that, actually, the way you were portraying that character. I thought he actually really had a problem. <laughs> but, uh, you know, any thoughts about your time on CSI and, uh, well, getting it back to what everyone's talking about, do you think that it had any influence on uh, the way they, on your character on The uh, Walking Dead? I enjoyed working on the show. I worked with the... Uh, I worked with Danny Cannon on a film called Judge Dredd. <coughs> the director of Judge Dredd was the director of the pilot. He was one of the executive producers <coughs> of CSI. And he called me and asked me to hey, play the role on the casino on Vegas. And he said, sure, without reading it. Because you know I'd like to. So I got I got uh, we got there and then he asked me back the next season. Asked me if I wanted to revive the character for another episode. And then it turned into a few more. So it was they killed me off the bridge. <laughs> Scott's mic going cutting out. Yes. Yeah. 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 It looks better. Is better? Yeah. All right. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. It's chiller, right? Nope. Hey. Um, do you continue to watch The Walking Dead, and what's that experience like as a spectator as opposed to, you know, being involved in the production? I kind of binge watch them mostly. So I'm still in contact with uh, almost all of the people. Andrew Lincoln beat me off the other day. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> but it's fun. One more question. Do you think that the uh, writers from The Walking Dead have it in for the Green family? <laughs> there's only one left. <laughs> but there's, well, I think there are only like five left from the first season. One left from the second season. And maybe, I don't know, one or two from the third season. Not too many. Not too many. No, I don't. I don't think they have it in for you. <laughs> for everyone. Any more? I just wanted to thank everyone for coming, and I really want to thank Scott for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, and a great job. <laughs>